Now, the last topic on basics is going to be a difficult topic because uh, many times uh, the electrical access calculation is very complex and people are afraid of uh, uh, reading this because uh, it's uh, it made so complicated. So, what we are trying to see in this electrical access is to see how the electrical activity of the heart or the net cardiac vector we told you about resultant cardiac impulse in which direction it is traveling. So, that is what the calculation of electrical axis. So, here we are going to see how the ECG is traveling inside the heart. So, first we see how the electrocardiographic impulses are traveling in the chest leads or in the ventricles. So, we are going to concentrate on the ventricle only today. In the electrical axis, we are going to see how the impulse is traveling inside the ventricle. So, first we see how the electrical impulses are traveling inside your ventricle and how that influences the ECG complexes in the chest leads. So, how they are traveling influences the complexes in chest leads. How the ECG is traveling inside your ventricles horizontally represents or the influences the type of ECG complex in the chest leads. So, now the first area after atrial depolarization which has happened the first area to be activated in the heart is interventricular septum. So, the interventricular septum is activated from left to right by the left bundle. So, the left bundle activates the interventricular septum. So, atrial activation has produced the P wave, the AV node delay has happened, PR interval. Then you have the ventricular activation, which is the first area to be activated in the ventricle is interventricular septum. It is happening from left to right and it is a left bundle to the right bundle. So, left to right is your uh, normal septal activation that is the first area. So, the normal activation of the ventricle is coming from left side towards the right side. So, because of that the V1 which is the right side seed will produce initial R wave and V5, V6 will produce initial Q wave, small initial Q wave. So, the initial small Q wave in V5, V6 and initial R wave in V1 represent septal depolarization coming from left to right. Then through the intact right bundle and through the intact left bundle, there is a simultaneous activation of right and left ventricle. But because of the dominance of the left ventricle, the net ventricular depolarization as I told you in the first lecture is likely to travel towards left. So, because of the larger muscle mass, we will pull the resultant cardiac vector towards the left side. So, the net ventricular depolarization is going to travel to the left. Because of that, the left side leads like V5, V6 will produce tall R wave in V5 and V6 and V1 because it is the right side lead and the net ventricular depolarization is going away from it, V1 will produce a predominantly negative QRS complex which is a S wave. That is why I told you V1 is predominantly negative in a normal ECG, V5, V6 is predominantly positive in a normal ECG. So, this is how ventricular depolarization is happening. In V1, V5, V6, the in between leads like V2, V3, V4, what is happening is there will be a gradual increase in R wave before they become totally upright in V5 and V6. So, the gradual increase in R wave from V1 to V2, V3, V4 and these are the transition zones where a predominantly negative complex in V1 is going to become predominantly positive in V5, V6. So, the V2, V3, V4 will show most often a gradual increase in R wave or equiphasic complexes, whereas V1 is negative, V5, V6 is positive. So, the traveling of the electrical impulses inside the heart like this influences the ECG in the chest leads. Whereas, you can see that here that this is the ECG, the small R wave in V1 and the small R wave Q wave in V5, V6. So, the first electrical activation is coming towards a small electrical activation of septal depolarization is coming towards right and the net ventricular depolarization a prominent a dominant left ventricular depolarization is coming towards left. So, this results in a deep S wave in V1 and tall R wave in V5 and V6. So, this is how the normal ECG looks. That is why I told you in a normal, whenever I asked you about the ventricular depolarization direction, you must look at AVR and V1. In AVR and V1 are predominantly negative. So, most often you are dealing with a 
not a very grossly abnormal depolarization. Most often the depolarization direction is likely to be normal. So, having seen how the ECG is influenced by the horizontal depolarization by the ventricles, it is a horizontal depolarization by the ventricles which is going to influence your ECG complex in chest leads. Now, what is going to decide how my limb lead ECG complexes are going to look like? So, that is decided by the electrical axis. So, the electrical axis, what is happening to the resultant cardiac impulse which is traveling from uh, right and superior region to left and inferior region is how it is going to influence the limb leads QRS complex is going to be decided by in which direction my net cardiac impulse or the vector is traveling and the calculation of that electrical vector is called electrical axis, calculation of electrical axis. So, this electrical axis will decide how my limb leads are going to show the QRS complex. So, that the configuration of QRS complex in the limb leads is going to be decided by my electrical axis.